Hi, this is Monty Twining, co-founder and product designer here at Roost and Root. The purpose of this video is to walk you through our walk-in coupe uh, and show you some of the design features and the CAD software that's used to both design and build the coupe. The purpose of this video is to dive into the, the distinct spaces that are in our walk-in coupe series, uh, coupes that are called walk-ins. These are branded as walk-in chicken coupes. These are what we originally sold way back when, going on 10 years ago now, as uh, a, the walk-in chicken coop, and the industry has kind of picked up on the term. Um, and uh, it comes in both a standard and an XL model. And uh, the purpose of this video is to really talk about the three distinct spaces in this coop and how they get used by the chickens. Uh, obviously, because it's a walk-in coop, uh, a person can walk into it. Um, and that, that's the big advantage of a walk-in coop is that the chicken keeper can also get out of the weather, whether it's snowing or raining, uh, and take care of your chicken keeping business, whether that's collecting eggs, filling the feeders. But the purpose of this video is to really focus on three distinct spaces in the walk-in chicken coop. Um, and that is the run, the egg box, and the roost area. And so we're just going to take each one of those spaces uh, one by one. Okay, so diving into the run area on these coops, basically the run area of a chicken coop is where the chickens spend their day. Pretty much after they wake up in the morning until the time that they get back up on the roost, which we'll go over later at night, the chickens spend their time um, down in the run during the day. Now, if you got the XL model, the run is all of this area that you see that's in contact with the ground, including this area over here that we call the sunroom. And if you've got the standard model coupe, it's pretty much the same thing, except for it doesn't have the sunroom. Now the addition of the sunroom allows us to be able to basically specify that this coupe could hold up to 25 hens. And without the sunroom, we call it 20. And that's based on four square feet of space per bird. So the USDA says that for eggs in the store to be labeled free range, that you need two or three square feet per bird. Um, we go beyond that and we calculate out four square feet of space. So with the sunroom, this is about 100. Without the sunroom, this is about 80 square feet of ground space for your bird. Now, this space is largely covered in the walk-in coop. If it's not covered by the roosting roof over here or the main run roof over here or the egg box roof over here and the standard model coop, the run space is pretty much sheltered from rain um, in this coop other than maybe something that came in from the side. So it's a pretty dry chicken coop. Uh, there is still plenty of sunlight that can get in through the front and the back of the coop. In the XL model, the sunroom is pretty much what the sunroom says it is. It's a sunroom. So it's not full height. There's really no reason for you to be able to walk into this area. It's plenty high for the chickens. And it just has some access doors on it in case you needed to be able to get to something in the run or to clean it or whatever. These doors here on the top, they uh, they flip up. And after they flip up, you've got um, really good access to this area of the run. Um, both the front and the back of the XL have a turnout door. So if you wanted to turn your chickens out during the daytime so that they could forage um, or just be out and run around your property a little bit, chickens are generally um, maybe 50, 100 feet at the most that they'll get away from the coop during the daytime before they come back for feed or water or to lay eggs or to roost. And so there's a door here on the XL as well as a turnout door on the back of the main part of the coop, whether it's the standard or the XL, it's kind of the same, it's, it, it's on this back. These doors also can be taken off and replaced with an automatic door. The advantage of the automatic door is it'll automatically shut itself at nighttime and automatically open itself in the morning if your chickens do wanna get out and get some free range time. You know, another thing to bring to your attention about the run is um, in all of our coops, we recommend that you leave the run uh, dirt, just whatever dirt you happen to have from your area. If for some reason you have to bring in dirt, the dirt that you would bring in would be what I think is often called sandy loam. Um, the only thing we really recommend on these coops is that if you can keep them raised um, and elevated, kind of the saying I like to go by is high ground is dry ground. As long as the ground that's under your coop is higher than the surrounding ground, it'll help keep it from collecting water. Um, water in chickens, standing water in chickens isn't a good idea. A little bit of water is fine. The chickens don't care and it'll dry up pretty quick as long as it's on high ground. 
I think that's pretty much it for the run. Next thing we'll talk about is the egg box. Okay, so sort of the second critical space in a chicken coop is the egg boxes. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of cut away this side. It's gonna be the same on um, an XL as it will be the standard model. The egg boxes are the same. These four very large egg boxes are more than capable of handling 25 birds doing their daily deed of laying eggs. Um, hens will take their turns laying the eggs um, and when one gets out, another one will hop in or you're more, these, these egg boxes are so big, you're liable to see two or even three birds in one box. And so there's a, a, a four egg boxes and they have this bar that sits in front of them that allows the chicken to jump up, land on the bar. From the bar, they can kind of tuck in through this hole to enter the egg boxes. What you're really going to see is in the daytime, a lot of times chickens will just hang out on these bars. They really kind of like hanging out there. It kind of gives them a little bit of elevation, gets them off the ground. They'll hang out there quite a bit. Um, you can collect the eggs from this side by just simply reaching in, or you can collect eggs on these coops from the outside through this collection door. They're held in place by these barrel bolts. Um, all the hardware on this coop is stainless steel, which is just unheard of. Um, but you can collect them from the inside or the outside. So you don't have to go into the coop to do your daily egg collection. You don't even have to collect them every day. If it's not too hot outside, you can easily collect eggs every second or third day. Um, the only other thing really to mention about the egg boxes is that the bottoms of the egg boxes are made out of wire. And the reason for this is because if an egg breaks, or should I say when an egg breaks in your egg box, uh, you want to be able to wash it out and be able to clean it out. And it's really hard to do that if your egg box has a solid bottom in it. Um, there's really not a whole lot else to say about the egg boxes. Um, we'll move on next and talk about the roost. Okay, the roosting area is over here on the right-hand side of this coop. I'm going to kind of hide the, the left-hand side of the coop so we can just sort of look into uh, what's going on over here. The roost area on a coop, a proper chicken coop would provide a roost area. It's where birds sleep at night, hens sleep at night. And there's a couple of things about a roost space that are required for a properly designed chicken coop. One of them is shelter, shelter for the birds in a, in a broad variety of temperatures and weather conditions. So this space is very dry. Um, this space is very well ventilated in, in the hot months. It's, it, it's just impossible to overstate um, that chickens are much more sensitive to heat than they are cold. Uh, chickens are very cold hardy. You really don't have to worry, worry about chickens at nighttime until it gets sub-zero. And in sub-zero temperatures, you'll, you're going to put covers on the coop, maybe, in, and for sure put covers on the roosting area, especially at night. Um, we'll talk about that more in a minute with storm panels. But the roost space is very protected. The, the birds feel safe there. It's high. They get in there. This space is going to naturally attract the birds to fall asleep here. I'll kind of hide these panels so you can get a good look at it. And, it. and it's basically a ladder system where the birds can get up to these roost bars. There's 16 feet of total roost bar space, which is just way more than enough for the 20 or 25 birds that the standard or the XL model of these coops we rate them for. Um, if your birds get a lot of turnout time, I, this this coop, we've seen, you know, 30 birds in here easily. Uh, but if they get a lot of turnout time, maybe you can do that. Um, but this all disassembles for cleaning. So these roost bars come off um, and they can be disassembled for cleaning. Another thing about these roost bars is in all of our coops, we make the roost bars act octagonal. And if you've ever looked at a chicken's foot, they're kind of segmented with joints, not so dis unlike our fingers with joints. Um, and they wrap around these roost bars in a very natural way and allow the chicken to get a good grip, um, really hang on tight throughout the night. If they need to huddle down and kind of put their feathers over the top of their feet to keep them warm, they can do that. Um, it's just a really good roost bar system in this walk-in coop. So I've started kind of calling this part of the video the shelter plan for the chickens. Um, and that means that, you know, we sell coops all in all 50 states. So we have to have coops that are set up to be able to work well in um, hot climates as well as cold climates. And like we've said uh, in earlier in the video, chickens are way more hold, cold hardy than they are heat tolerant. And so um, these coops are pretty wide open and for 90% of the people and 90% of the locations and 90% of the time, 
they're going to be fine with no storm panels on them. But if you live in an area where you get a lot of wind driven snow or there's two or three weeks out of the year that you've got sub zero temperature, sub zero wind chill, then you're going to want to cover these coops. And the way that we handle that so that you end up with a coop for all seasons is what we call storm panels. Storm panels are custom blended poly panels that are translucent, so they let light through. And we've invented these really nifty 3D printed clips that allow these panels to be attached to the coop very securely and block out uh, almost all of the wind and the wind driven snow. And I say almost all the wind because they're designed to be a little bit of a gap around them so that air can get through into the coop. Your birds will get sick if they don't get enough ventilation. And so we don't cover the holes up here on the top um, and we let the panels be a little bit loose fitting so that the birds get plenty of ventilation. Um, as I said earlier, the panels that are on the roost come stock with the coop. So if you live somewhere where you, you, you know it's not terribly cold all the time, you probably get away with this coop just the way it comes stock and not even have to buy the storm panels. A little further down the website page, there's a section that we call climate considerations that you can look at and there's a map and there's greater detail about figuring out whether or not you think that you need store pan storm panels um, for where you live. So to go over a few of the options that are available um, for this coupe, um, it's the same uh, options that are available for the standard model as well as the XL model really popular option that we have is for the water. Uh, the water is um, large enough to supply all the birds, um, 20, 25 birds for, you know, four, maybe even five days, certainly a long weekend. And um, there, the water is capable of holding a heater. The heater is going to keep your water flowing probably down to about zero degrees. If it gets below zero degrees, water is really hard to keep from freezing. Maybe you can buy one that's powerful enough. Um, we certainly have had people put in some bigger 200 watt uh, heaters in uh, these waters. Uh, the water comes standard with a poultry nipple. And the idea of the poultry nipple is the, the chickens don't poop in their water. I don't know if you've had other waters, other chicken coops where they have waters that sit on the ground and the chickens kind of poop in the water. It, it's pretty depressing. Uh, but with it being overhead like this, the chickens don't poop in the water. The other thing that we have that we make is a patented 3D, no freeze uh, poultry nipple that you can buy if you live someplace where you get a, a lot of sub 32 degree uh, temperatures. And uh, it will protect your water from freezing along with the heater um, in that kind of zero to 32 degree range. Once it gets below zero, um, it, it gets really hard to keep these poultry nipples from freezing and you, you'll, you'd have to deliver your chicken some kind of you know warm heated water. Along with the water, most of the time, uh, we'll end up somebody will end up selling, or excuse me, buying um, our feeders, and our feeders are accessed through a magnetically attached uh, roof panel on this coop. Our roof panels are all made out of galvalume on this coop. They're metal, they're strong, but they do not transfer heat because of the patented aluminum coating on them. Uh, and these feeders feed, uh, can be filled up from outside the coop, and uh, the chickens get to the feed from inside the coop. They're kind of gravity. So the gravity dumps the feed through these chutes into these cups and then the chickens can peck it out of there. And as they peck it out of there, more feed is delivered. Um, the other thing that we sell um, as an accessory to the coop are egg box liners. So the egg boxes, if you wanted to line them with kind of an AstroTurf sort of a pad that's been custom cut to fit in these egg boxes, it'll cover them, it'll help them keep it dark. They're, they come out, they can be washed. They're really good as far as an egg box liner. And um, on this coop, we also offer this back wall. So these two panels here can be replaced with a front wall. So like you can buy basically an extra front wall section to this coop and have a, a walk through a chicken coop. What, what we typically see people do who do that is they might build a netted run area or some other kind of an X out outside run area that still contains their chickens. And they just want to be able to use the coop as a complete walk through coop. Of course, the storm panels are optional. 
Um, but that's about it for options on this coupe. It's a pretty fully loaded coupe the way it comes and very usable. I hope that helps you understand the design idea behind the walk-in chicken coops, and we hope to have you as a customer too. Thank you very much.